I'm Jeff McCready, as he said. Um, thanks for inviting me. I remember spending a ton of time in this house when I was here palling around with Ray Ocampo was president that year. Yeah. yeah, and Ray connected me with Andrew. So really happy to be here. The idea is just to share and chat over a few insights, a few strategies that you guys are going to be able to put into action right away, whether you're a freshman or a senior, and get you kind of moving down the road because there's a lot of us here and we're going to have similar profiles, but how do people know who's who, you know, when they're looking to hire someone? It might be right away. It might be after a few years, but eventually you're going to have what we call a career. Or the alternative would be, I guess, a series of jobs that you use to pay the bills. And that's the entire big secret behind my talk tonight is it's your choice if you want to have a career or a series of jobs. And as we all know, it's not like you just get to circle CEO on your last day of school and you go and you do that or janitor or whatever the thing might be. It's a long term thing about priorities and choices and really where we, sp where we choose to spend our time. So I'll share some details about my own career that bounced around a ridiculous amount. Um, and then I'll actually tie it back into a few things you guys can do starting tomorrow to get going on getting a better job or an internship or whatever that looks like for you. So every single, every single summer during undergrad, I did an internship. Um, one year I went to Target, worked in Portland. One year I went to the Amazon jungle and interned with Quechua Indians and found microfinance loans for them. Got a scholarship to go and do that. Uh, one, one summer I went and interned in DC. Uh, when I graduated, I worked in e-commerce and then a restaurant then an art gallery. And then I became an artist and I made wood furniture and sculptures out of driftwood, which I sold. And then I became a small yay and made wine and did wine tours all over Napa and did all of this. Even along the way, I made a Viking inspired eco casket startup. And it was as ridiculous as it sounds and it was not very successful, but I learned a ton. And that's what this is about. So <clears throat> I think I probably did about a dozen things, some for a few years, some for a few months. But finally, I found something that I could do every day without going crazy that I actually liked, and that's coaching. And there weren't really any shortcuts on the path for me. I had to go through a bunch of weird, unusual experiences that helped me kind of hone in on what I don't care about and what I do. And it's not the thing that necessarily I see on TV or the radio or, or wherever it is. It's about kind of finding what you care about more than anything else. And it's not necessarily what society is going to tell you you should care about. And all of those experiences helped me know what I want and what I didn't. And, what I, and finally, when I was qualified to tackle it, they gave me the skills to do that. So I'm from Eugene. I graduated from the business school, graduated from the Honors College, did a minor in Spanish. And during my, as I said, five short years here, I joined the investment group and I started a club for sustainable development. And I did all those internships. And it was kind of ridiculous and exhausting. But over time, I've come to believe that it's the extra amount of involvement and proactivity that is the difference that helped me get my first few jobs. And then when I moved to San Francisco, it helped me get a job as a headhunter and it helped me make 100K from home, which was my huge goal. Every year I wanted to be able to do that, have flexibility and, and make great money. Um, but it left me feeling kind of empty. I was working 60 hour weeks from my sofa. I was actually working for the companies, not the people who were looking for jobs. So it felt like a transactional relationship. And it, you know, after six or seven years, I needed more. So that realization propelled me not only to seek income, but the personal meaning and satisfaction. And that's now my number one priority. It only took 14 years. So if anyone can pocket that tonight and also go for something that you care about, that's a really the big part of my, of my offering here tonight. So if I had gone right for the thing that I'm doing, I would have struggled. I wasn't qualified yet. So what can you do to get from here tonight to being a respected, well-connected expert earning great money? I have some ideas. I'll share these with Andrew. No one's probably going to write these down, but that's OK. I'll send this speech over to Andrew. It would be, number one, find five LinkedIn profiles of people you think are amazing. Cool career path, cool job right now. Reverse engineer this and bring it back to what, what college did they leave? You know, what internships did they get? What were their first jobs? 
and bring that back to what can I do today to become better qualified to enter this field? It might be a book, reaching out to someone on LinkedIn who's an expert, ask for an informational interview, people will give it to you. If you can get five or 10 minutes from an amazing person, form a relationship, ask them to be your mentor. These, this is how you start to do this. And in order to do that effectively, you're gonna to wanna to polish your LinkedIn and your resume. So number one, if you don't have a baller headshot yet, you can get one made by AI, just send in your selfies. Um, the other thing would be polish your LinkedIn and resume, use bullets to do it succinctly, start with authored or drove, not managed or oversaw, you know, get active about it. And then also you can start bullets with numbers and try and pack in 100% plus as many times as you possibly can. Recruiters are looking for that phrase. So finally on your resume, look for job descriptions that you're interested in, take the key phrases, pack them into your resume and you will be found by recruiters looking to hire for that job. So they're telling you how you can actually become located by, by their talent staff. The last thing would be do an internship or job or something productive and resume worthy every single summer that you're here, even if it's the summer after your senior, senior year. I have 25 ideas, I'm gonna send them out and I'm curious if anyone has any ideas or maybe you already have a plan for this summer about something that you can do that's gonna build your resume and help you in the job market when you hit it, if that's not this year. Yes? I feel like a low commitment resume boost are like those certification things you can do through LinkedIn or like Microsoft for different skills. Absolutely, yep. My, uh, LinkedIn, Microsoft, Udemy does those things. So I'm gonna rattle off a few of my favorite and then we're gonna be done. So learn to code and make an app. Doesn't have to be production level. Gain skills in sales, anything. Cars, art, computers, something like that. Start a business resell or drop ship in, uh, products online, you could roast coffee and sell it for 25 bucks a pound because people are buying. Um, be an assistant for a prof. Um, <clears throat> call an alumni and see what they're working on and if you can tackle a project with them, either paid or unpaid if you can swing it. Um, you could do computer help for older folks. I know someone who was making incredible money doing that in high school and college. Uh, you could be a raft guide, tutor or mentor kids, golf caddy, Wildland firefighting, you could play poker, you could work on a ranch or farm, you could reach out to a career coach to help you with any of that stuff. I live 10 blocks away, I'm available to help, would love to help you guys out. Um, I have some cards, but I'll just send my email over and if anyone wants to reach out or text, you're all invited to do it. Thanks. <laughs>